All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. Today, our topic is about terrorism. Nothing new. I mean, terrorism is ugly, disgusting, and all of us, we you know, we reject such a behavior. Always, when we speak about terrorism, we need to understand what the word terror meant and what is the target. Terrorism, simply, is a cowardly attack. And usually, it happens against civilians who they are unarmed, unprepared, and they do not know that somebody is going to attack them. Like women in the street, bus station, train, uh, nightclub, uh, you name it. And in this case, today, we heard the news about this madman who killed and he shot uh, almost 49 people in the mosque in New Zealand. Now, this guy, he have his own uh, excuse, which I reject totally, claiming that because the Muslims, they attack and they killed and etc., so he is going to do what they did. But this is a false excuse, because still, you don't do, if you are rejecting crimes, you don't do crimes. Same time, those people who they are in the mosque, they did not do anything to you. They are not even, not even one of them is one of those shooters who did shoot in your country. It's called uh, Australia. So you are shooting at who? At people who never did anything wrong to you. Uh, so anyone he want to do killing, always he come with excuses. And excuses is the most ugly part of terrorism. But the problem is, People want to talk about what happened today, but they don't want to talk about the roots and the solution. Uh, is my voice coming clear, guys? <clears throat> is my voice coming clear? Please let me know if you have any difficulty. You see, if for all of us, and I am in, you know, always I reject hate and I reject terrorism and reject violence, because simply this is not only uh, not only I reject it as a person, as a human being, but this is against the teaching of Christ. Uh, but if you want to fight a problem, you don't just give a, somebody is dying from a disease, you give him a, 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 like a, a pill for a headache and say, okay, now you feel better. So people, they are condemning, 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 but nobody want to really solve the problem. What about the disease? What is the hatred coming from? What is the roots of all the hatred? Why this guy, he did not attack, you know, Hindus? This is a question we should ask. Why uh, we see somebody attacking uh, a synagogue for the Jews, uh, but he's attack attacking Hindus? I mean, why there is a specific group is targeted? Guys, do you understand what I'm saying? We need to ask ourselves why specific groups are targeted. Christians' churches are burned around the world, destroyed, Christians slaughtered, killed. Thousands of Christian girls kidnapped in Nigeria are raped. Thousands of Christian Nigerians killed. Mali, Somalia, Syria, Iraq, Yazidi, you name it. And the world is watching and they are busy fighting terrorism but the fact you are not really fighting terrorism because you are not fighting the roots of the problem in this channel we fight the roots it's enough it's not enough okay now you capture a terrorist or you kill the terrorist but tomorrow there's more terrorists will come because they still adopt the idea so in order to fight terrorism you have to fight the idea of terrorism If you want to fight a disease, you don't fight a disease by just killing the bacteria. Just one, there's many, there's millions. So the bacteria here in this uh, in this in this case is an idea. As long people believe in killing and hatred, then terrorism will not stop. So we as as a, as a human who live in this earth and we seek peace and you know uh, uh, civil life. We have to fight the hate idea. 
you know I found like uh, <clears throat> in the news leaders from around the world condemning and for sure they should should condemn but what about doing something about it that's it you know you think you can fight terrorism by sending an army to fight Isis or this guy that uh, you know tomorrow maybe there's other guy he like what this guy he did he's a crazy like him he would do what he did you have to fight the idea my friend the idea is the problem I saw Erdogan as an example is speaking about Islamophobia this guy if you mention the Armenian genocide in his country you will be arrested up to 15 years just for saying the word genocide of the Armenian a million and a half Armenian were slaughtered and until now this guy he refused and his government and his country refused even to admit that they did it so they condemn somebody he is a criminal for killing something or some like 50 people but he could don't condemn himself killing millions so here we notice the dishonesty of many people who claim that they are against terrorism Erdogan is the founder of Isis all the border of Turkey was open for Isis member did you ask yourself how in the world somebody coming from Morocco or from Shishenia or coming from China he land in the airport of Istanbul he didn't know nothing in Syria he know no one in Syria he's going to the Syrian border he crossed the borders in the front of the eyes of and the, the checkpoint of the Turkish customs and they let him go didn't you ask him you are Chinese what are you coming to do in Syria why you are going to Syria and everybody knows there is a war there and there's Isis is growing so he smuggled all the weapon he smuggled to them all the animation all the fighters and yet he claimed that he is fighting terrorism and he condemned terrorism CIA is the same during the time of the Soviet Union the CIA they send their trainers to train the Mujahideen in Afghanistan train them to do what to do a terrorism attack as simple as that you want to call it uh, fighting the Soviet Union I mean Soviet Union so what the Soviet Union are there is a government and you are training terrorists so the CIA when they want they support terrorists and when they want terrorists are bad the same garbage so they claim outside that we fight terrorism but we support terrorism in the same time so now those Mujahideen, they believe in Allah, they believe in killing the Kuffar, they believe in killing those communists, those uh, uh, atheists, and then what we do, we go there and we say, okay, we will give you arm, we will train you, and go ahead, and we say to them, Allahu Akbar. The same garbage. But if you ask any official in USA, do you condemn terrorism? He will say yes. But in fact, how many terrorist groups USA supported in the last, let us say, 50 years? Right now, as we speak, ISIS lost lost hold, which means ISIS is almost gone in Syria. But is ISIS is gone? No, because it's not for the benefit of many countries that ISIS will go. As we speak now, Erdogan is protecting Al Qaeda in north of Syria. And as we speak right now, Trump he is planning to withdraw all the army of USA from Syria why mr. Trump are you done there no more terrorists left there al-qaeda is controlling a big part of Syria still suddenly al-qaeda is not our target and our target is just Isis why because al-qaeda now they are serving at let us say uh, a target for USA they are fighting the Iranian they are fighting Hezbollah so let us let let them I mean let the terrorists busy with the terrorists this, this is the whole idea what about Hezbollah a big terrorist group sponsored and supported by many many government including Western government and then now Germany refused to consider Hezbollah a terrorist group they are even refusing just yesterday uh, France I think they 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 put uh, like a hold on the money of the of the founder of the uh, the, the, the what is called 
the army of Islam, which is the one who killed just 50 soldiers in India just uh, a month ago. Now you do it that this guy is killing people for last century. Now, so what we notice here around us in the world that all of them, they are hypocrites and none of them is fighting terrorists. The fact they are supporting terrorism. The fact they are supporting terrorism. Regardless of the name, regardless of the religion, regardless of etc. All of them, they are liars and they use terrorism for their agenda. And those leaders, they are not the first one to use terrorism. And here, before we continue in this, I want to ask the Muslims, if you really are sincere to fight terrorism, join us to fight hate. Fight anything will make people hate each other. When, you know, when we say, uh, Christmas tree, Christmas uh, uh, market attack in Germany, in France, in Strasbourg, uh, uh, in Finland, in you name it, in, in Holland. I mean, why the Muslims around the world don't take a stand against this? Because always hate bring nothing but hate. When 9-11 happened, why we don't see millions of Muslims going in the street condemning the attack of 9-11, which killed more than 3,000 people, burned alive. And instead, we found in Gaza, in Hamas stronghold, people dancing in the street, praising Allah for the killing of 3,000 Americans. So here we need to be honest. We have a problem. We have culture of hate. And this culture we need to fight. It doesn't matter who tried to spread that culture. If you claim to be Christian and you spread, you know, hate culture or hate teaching, first of all, you are no Christian, and you have nothing to do with the Christ. If you are a Muslim and you believe in that culture, then you need to ask yourself, what is next? What do you want? Do you think really you can destroy America by attacking a gay night club? Do you think really that will solve the problem? That's it. You destroy America. The attack yesterday reminded me of the guy who attacked the Muslim guy, who his name is uh, Omar something. He attacked a gay club in Orlando, Florida. He killed exactly 50 people dead, according to the title in front of us, and left hundreds injured. And we do not know after that how many people die. So it's the same. It's hate. This guy, he want to do jihad. Why he want to do jihad? What is the root of the problem? Why he decided to go and attack the gay club? Did you ask yourself, why a guy who is married, he have a job, he want to do such a thing? I mean, people always, they forget to go and seek the roots. Everything have a reason, and most of the reasons are ugly, which is hate teaching. They condemn, they condemn the killer, but they don't want to condemn the ideology. This guy who did his crime yesterday in New Zealand, he have no ideology. He is just an angry person for things he saw around him, as he claimed in 29 uh, paper he published. And as I said, I'd find all the excuses he gave in those papers, you know, stupid and cannot be accepted. Because even if somebody, he killed somebody, I mean, you go and you kill, I mean, look at this. Even justice teaching says that the killer should be killed. You don't kill the neighbor. Is that correct? I mean, if somebody is a killer, Okay, justice, like the one who killed, it's justice that the person who killed those people, he should be killed. Why you are killing someone have nothing to do with the one who shoot. You are not even shooting the shooter. 50 people, they are praying in the mosque, and you, what do you do? You go and shoot people have nothing to do just because they are Muslims? All the rules of justice, when it's come to hate, 
it's gone because hate justify crimes don't justify justice do we understand when you have a hatred in your side you don't see justice except hate the hate you have is your justice according to you but this is absolutely false justice even in old days the criminals even criminals you know they don't kill like you see two criminals they want to fight they fight like a man to man and the man he would say to him okay grab your sword even in the ugly days they used to say okay I'm not going to shoot somebody I'm not going to injure you get your sword even at that time they have more honor men they used to be more honorable how you want to fight a person or you kill a person who have no arms in his hand this is a very cowardly behavior people in night club you go and you start shooting is is that making you a hero what about you tell them I am coming and I have arms with me and let us see what will happen if you are already a man what about this guy he said to those people in the mosque I am coming to you and tomorrow I'm going to bring my gun and let us see if he can do what he did but he is a coward he took people into surprise and people they are busy doing what is have nothing to do with war and defending themselves but again we don't want to talk about the real problem where all of this is coming from if this guy he claimed that what he did is a reaction and we don't accept what he says to claim justification for it we ask the Muslims to join us to fight the roots of the problem and the roots should be condemned by anyone anyhow if I have a prophet and he is a terrorist and then I consider him he have the right to do terror so how you can condemn other terrorists either you condemn all terrorists or you condemn no one I condemn all terrorists no matter who they are if somebody claimed to be Christian and he's a terrorist we should fight him and actually if I am armed and I exist in that mosque when this guy he came I will be the first to shoot this criminal and take him down to defend those poor Muslims a Christian should not watch a crime and he watch silently Here you see that Muhammad he did exactly as this guy what he did. He waited for people who they are busy, they are living their life. Women they are cooking, the men they are watering their animals. And this is a story reported by the Muslims themselves, printed, published, transformed through centuries to us, protected by Muslims. And obviously, those who wrote this story, they are proud about the Prophet. It says the Prophet had suddenly attacked Bani al-Mustaliq without warning, the same exactly as this criminal who attacked the mosque. While they were headless and their cattle were being watered, they have no idea what's coming to them. Women are cooking, kids are playing, the men are feeding the animals, and the terror is coming. What is missing in this story, Muhammad at that time, he don't have Facebook. Otherwise, I assure you, he will publish it too. Because obviously, he's proud of what he is doing. And then Muhammad, after he killed all the men, he took all the women and the children as captives, and he raped a woman, her name is Juria, in the same spot. Why we don't condemn this terrorist? Just because you gave him a title of a prophet? No one is above the law.
if you believe in the law of justice regardless of your religion background culture well practice justice when somebody speak and he says terrorism or we you know I am I am a person who condemn terrorism and then he says to me I you know I love the Prophet okay what do you love about him the Prophet said the Prophet said not me the message of Allah said I've been helped actually in Arabic it says I've been victorious by terror why we don't see people condemning the first terrorist in the front of us big terrorist all terrorists are ugly a terrorist from New Zealand is no better than this terrorist why people are being dishonest condemn all act of terrorism Condemn all those who teach hate. Those books are published in the newspapers, in the schools, everywhere, in libraries. A person who read them, he will go, if he believe in it, he will practice what he believe in. And as you see, This is what they believe in. So we have to fight a belief of hatred. And we have to stand against it. And we are here to help the Muslims and anyone who ever think to adopt hatred to understand that hatred is not a solution. Terrorism manuscript. This guy he have a 29, 29 pages of manuscript terrorism, or let's say script. He wrote it by himself. But that script is no better than the script. Cut the necks and install terror. That is terrorism. It's not for any prophet to have captives until he had made slaughter in the land. What a God. Does God, he don't like captives, he likes slaughters. And look like the God of this guy who killed those poor Muslims in New Zealand. He have a same God, at least in his head, that he don't want to take captives. He want to slaughter. So why we don't condemn this? Chapter eight, verse number sixty-seven. Killing Christians around the world, killing Hindus, killing Muslims will not solve a problem. You are killing nothing but your own self. Life is like a mirror and hatred will come back to you. Don't preach hate, don't teach hate because you are yourself, you are going to hurt yourself. It's going to come back to you always. Hate is like a, a bounced bullet. It's like shooting shooting the wall which is very close in front of you and then the bullet will come and go on your eye but as you see nobody want to speak about the real problem here we fight terrorism better than any FBI department or any police department in the world
when the Quran says take not Christians and Jews as a friend and we say to Muslims let us be friends that is the best way to fight hate this is the best way to fight hate my friends Imagine, imagine if we cannot take friends from anyone just because he don't believe in what we believe. That's mean we will not have a friends even you're inside your family. Inside your family, there's, you know, your brother, your sister don't agree with you with many things. So take not friends from those and those. That is the root of the problem. When, you, when the Quran says take not Christians and Jews as a friends, what does that mean? Take them as enemies? So we as a Christians and Muslims and Hindus, we should reject any kind of teaching like that. Why we can't be friends? What is the problem exactly? A guy, he is next to me, next door, he is a Hindu. Okay, I don't agree with his religion. You might even find it funny. But still, he is a nice person, good to you. Why I want to hate him? A Muslim guy, he is next door to me, and he believes in Allah, and he believes Christianity is a false religion. Okay, well, still he is nice, and he's a good person. What's the problem? But following a script like this is a problem. Because if you believe in it, then you practice it. And if you practice it, that is where hatred will start. If you teach your child since an early age, he is six, seven years old, says, Oh, the Quran says, take not Christians and Jews as a friends. What do you expect of him when he is a growing man? Do we have any Muslim here disagree with me? Who is a Muslim would like to give me a call and have a nice conversation together? Any Muslim? If you are a Muslim and only a Muslim, please feel free to contact me and I will take your call and I will be happy to hear you. Why we cannot be friends? Who is the, who, what is the problem here? What is the problem of this God if we became a friends? What will happen? What will happen to Allah if you as a Muslim, you became a friend to a Christian or a Jew? Allah will be destroyed, Allah lost, Allah humiliated, if he is God. And God, you know, and the, and the weird is that we hear many people saying Islam means peace. This is what they say. Okay, practice it. Take friends from the Christians and the Jews. Take friends from the Hindus. Let us all of us be friends. And by the way, friends here doesn't mean I mean you uh, how close it's, it's it's just like you know live together in peace, and uh, to reject just hatred for a person just because he looked differently from me. Even racism, the root of racism is what is hatred. When you say to somebody, oh, a black person, he is a. Uh, uh, he is a criminal or they are criminals that's it in his mindset when he see a black person he get he get like uh, you know oh he's a, a black person you know there's a criminals who said that white people don't have a criminals who said that uh, Asian don't have a criminal we there is bad there's good in every ethnic in every color in every religion in every there is bad and good people are bad and good in the same family you will find a person he is wonderful and a person he is a is, he's a, is a very uh, ugly criminal they are born from the same woman and they have the same blood and even they believe maybe even in the same book supposedly so why in the world the media focus like why we wait until a crime happened and then we start condemning the crime why we don't condemn the ideology which is promoting the crime fighting it 
hundreds of hours in TV stations speaking now about this criminal. And actually, by the way, by doing that, this guy is getting excited also because obviously he liked to be, uh, you know, seen. He liked to be famous, maybe. I, should I believe or, uh, a big part of what he did because he liked to be seen in TV. And this is why he was saying, uh, let us party. And he was excited because he have his camera going live. So they publish all of this, and actually they are giving him satisfaction of, of his crime. Please call me only if you are a Muslim. Hello? Hello, CP. Yes. Hi. Uh, you spoke about Erdogan and all. It Sorry, I me... cannot hear your voice is cutting. Say again. Uh, hi, I'm from Turkey. You were talking about Erdogan and yeah. all the neighborhood relationship with the ice and all and right. it made me want to call you all right you're welcome go ahead my friend i just uh wanted to back you up that way about uh, the relationship how people were being transported to syria the people come from europe the people come from uh, arabic countries i was in the neighborhood i live close by they were all uh, comfortably being transported while coming from airport taking in comfortable buses and being transported to their army bases i mean yeah actually i saw a video i think um, as long as you are from turkey i'm sure you yeah. know about it a video where the the turkish army they were they they uh, uh, they have full tr uh, trucks full of weapons are, are sent to syria you know? yeah the journalist who and now he's in jail Germany. right the journalist who did that he is in jail yeah so nice when, when you when you share Turkey. the truth you see guys this journalist he taped the Turkish army yeah he's in Germany he's in Germany though he's not uh, in the army he ran away to Germany oh he ran away Germany. okay but they, but, yeah. but he, if he go back to Turkey he will spend the rest of his life in jail correct oh more than his life yeah mostly he will be, they will kill him so he yeah. exposed what happened the Turkish army yeah loading trucks and sending the yeah. weapon and the ammunition to ISIS and to Al Qaeda, and yet in this yeah. in the in the screen, Erdogan he says we are condemning terrorism. That's full of shit. Yeah, but you know we have to be honest here too. It's not only yes, it's are, not only Turkey there, doing there, that. There, there are are Europeans to be honest. Yeah, uh, there's European countries. It, they are doing the same. Turkey is the little puppy uh, by the knee of the United States. As soon as Erdogan start, start not listening to United States. ISIS start bombing Turkey and all over in Ankara and in Istanbul in the in the club in the Christmas. Ah, this is all together. Uh, uh, United States, uh, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. This is a triangle. The the devil triangle. I call it. Right. They all did this together. Right. And it should be you should be blind not to see it. I live in a, I live in Europe also in all the boss. They start promoting it. They start. Uh, I mean, giving the guys, teenagers, you have to go join. This is the war of Allah. It's time to ask for us to stand against the devil West. This was how it was being promoting. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Europe is these ways. Are they blind? Are they strange? Are they stupid? I cannot name it. They were. They, they could see it. It was happening in front of their eyes, but they did nothing to stop it. It's not only Erdogan, Markel. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, we are we here. We speak against anyone. It doesn't matter who, and yeah. bad is bad, good is good. No matter who are the one is doing uh, such a bad or good. Uh, thank you, my friend, for calling. Anything else you want to share? At the moment, no, really. I feel really so bad for the people who lost their life in New Zealand. Yeah, I felt really so bad for the people who lost their life under the truck in France. I, lo I felt really bad for the people in uh, London on over the bridge who've been stabbed, all of them. I wish uh, any Christian, any Jew, any non-believer, any Muslim could just stand up and be against all those uh, kind of acts and uh, try to keep the, the peace at the moment we have. Yeah, I wish everybody could do that together. Really, we need it. We really need that. That. That's wonderful, my friend. Thank you for calling, and I agree with you. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Andrew. Yeah, you know, a, a piece is something priceless. People will not notice until they lose it. Imagine if we go in chaos and we start hating each other and, you know, we start slaughtering. Just because somebody, he don't, he don't look like me or he don't agree with me. I mean, how disgusting, how fearful the life will be.
how you can even trust in the street to, to walk in the street after now if people will, will think with such a mentality so terrorism is not only something we should reject it is something it's a threat to you if you think you are safer from it, it maybe maybe now you are just watching a video in the internet what if tomorrow it happened to you and it might happen to you why not and those who have terrorist mentality they enjoy massive killing not the killing of one person no 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 they will target a big number the, the bigger the number is the more happy they are so I will not be surprised in the future they start using nukes or dirty bombs actually already they tried so we all of us you know we have to make it clear that uh, hate never bring a solution peaceful mindset where I want to live in, in peace I want to have a peaceful life with my neighbors doesn't matter who they are they are Muslims they are Christians they are Jews they are Hindus they are atheists if I have a child I have to tell him that don't believe in any garbage like this you know because if you start hating them the first victim will be in this hate is you hate is the same as a poison you have it in your mouth you think you are going to spit it in the mouth of somebody else but the fact you are the first victim of it and don't go by the media media always flips things upside down they report for you what is outside but they don't report what is inside and if they report one day about what is inside is going to disappear as an example I I remember the the media and uh, the BBC I think in England once they have like a, a hiding camera program inside the mosque I forgot what the name of the program and then after they publish it in less than a month they hide all of this so at that time why nobody says that this media BBC is spreading hate as Mus against Muslims the second you publish something truthful and you have a hiding camera recording what they say inside those places teaching hatred by publishing that they will accuse you that you are teaching hate and in a magical way the BBC they start deleting those videos from all over anyone remember what the program was I think you can still find it you know like some people they download before they take them down so anyway these days if you are a person who speak the truth you are a hate monger when the fact that people who speak the truth is the best ones to fight hatred it's like you know yeah dispatch dispatch correct the video name is dispatch I remember it now dispatch the best way to fight hatred is to speak against it not to uh, uh, act as, as if it's not exist to fight the roots of it and making a speech about okay let us love each other without fighting the roots is a stupid hating evil is good you know I refrain from using the word hate because if I want to fight hate I don't want to hate but evil is evil and we reject that but the, the problem is evil is good for some because of their belief and this is the this is the problem which we should face and we should fight how you make a person who is believing in evil he think it's good like this guy now who killed those Muslims he think this is good which is evil but for him he is doing great job so the problem is how to fight the idea of making evil good before a person who do an act of evil before not after after it's too late that's it he killed 50 people so now what you do you go to jail and you convince him he's in jail so 
how you can fight an evil thoughts and evil hatred in the heart of somebody before he do his a crime because if you can fight that idea then the crime itself will never happen right because always you know things start with an idea and the idea have a sponsor what is the sponsor of this hatred so if I make a Muslim believe that the Jews are Jews are human like us and we should not hate them then there is no Muslim will hate the Jews and he will not try to kill them as simple as that right but if a Muslim is still want to believe in what Muhammad said then that fighting that idea is impossible so you have to fight the belief in hatred look at this statement of Muhammad the last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Muslims would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree and the stone or the tree would say a Muslim O servant of Allah is there O Muslims you said that the, the, the stone the stone is talking imagine this the, the hatred is spread not only to a human being even stones now they hate the Jews even trees they hate the Jews so the Muslims here according to Muhammad they have a duty so how we can make peace between the Jews and the Muslims if we believe in this that's mean all the peace agreement between the Jews and the Muslims is is a lie as long the Muslim believe in this so the only way we can establish really peace between Jews and Muslims specifically in this case is to make the Muslim believe that no you should not fight the Jews and you should not kill them live with them because simply the Jews they will kill you back too I mean, don't think about it. Okay, we go and kill them and it's done. You think that's that easy? So as long there is a person who believe in this, then hatred is still there. This is the roots. This is the root of the problem. I saw Jewish who they are uh, even defending Palestinian, defending Muslims. There's a guy, his name is uh, Toriva Singer, who always take the side of uh, Islam against Christianity. I don't know he's being hypocrite, he don't know, he can be whatever he want. But according to Islam, look what Islam says about this Jewish guy. And hatred became a culture of stones. As you see, the stone will scream, says, Oh, oh, Muslims, oh, servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. How ugly. So we have to fight such a teaching. If you really are seeking a solution, not just a speech. Otherwise, we would hear the same thing each time a terrorist attack happened. In the last month, how many people get killed? According, I saw in a website, more than almost, and, and this is not all the list, it's just some of the terrorist attack. Happened in the name of Allah, more than 800 people get killed. 800 people. And we don't see people condemning, we don't see, I mean, it became a normal news. It became a normal news if we hear like an Islamic terrorist attack happened. To the point nobody condemn it no more because what we will condemn to condemn so everybody is denying the fact that we should fight the ideology behind terrorism which is the ideology of hatred this is the only way you can fight terrorism otherwise you are just wasting your time and you are being a fool
that is the true story which nobody want to tell you the roots of the problem and you know the funny thing is they need to create a chaos in the world my friend the world is in chaos already you do not need to create a chaos don't you see what's happening western western today and you see I live in the West and, and when I say Western I'm talking about Western government Western these days Western government is like a mad cow you know what the mad cow is literally like a mad cow they are seeking war with Russia they are seeking war with China they are seeking war everywhere they are asking for it they are working for it and they are sponsoring terrorism and the world is going to be a horrible world maybe in 20 years from now Look at what the Western doing with Russia. I mean, the most stupid behavior ever. You can't even imagine how dangerous it is. What if this guy put in, he, he, he lost his mind? A little potato, the head of uh, North Korea, scaring the hell of Europe. If that guy is scaring you aren't you scared of what can happen if you go in war with Russia but they are pushing and they are pushing harder and harder and everybody every day they add a new sanctions on Russia you see the world have no idea where it is heading because of those stupid leaders we have literally stupid leaders mad leaders they are seeking war and seeking in danger of this earth and the funny the funny and the sad in the same time when somebody says to you we are going to put sanctions in russia and russia is being a bad boy as if they are the good boy france until now they have colonies inside africa in the pacific same as england england occupying the falkland islands which is belong to argentina i mean the whole the whole world is upside down you know they they claim justice they claim that okay russia took a crimea they call it crimea right okay for you it's okay to take the Falkland but it's not okay to Russia to take a Crimea I mean look at the double standard and the hypocrisy what 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 England had to do with the Falkland you know do you know how far the Falkland from from England or the French colonies in, in in Africa or in the Caribbean or I mean it's okay for them to have but if somebody else you want no you cannot you cannot do that only us we can do that so we have to be aware of the agenda of, of a, a big corporation you see uh, I, I don't support social socialism but it's true that big companies are controlling the politics of this earth the whole war here is a war about business corporation from the West controlling government in the West fighting Russia who is the biggest giant rich filthy rich who have a lot of gas oil source resource in the top of that they are extremely powerful in weapon so the sanctions really is not about Russia as being bad the Russia the sanctions is just to protect corporation because now you cannot buy from the Russian but what of those sanctions one day make things go out of hand and it might happen russia is the biggest country in this earth and nobody can put sanctions on it it's a joke those people they do not need anyone in the world actually they are number one people who feed bread to mankind 
which means before they they get in hunger, all mankind will go in hunger. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Syria, Middle East, you everybody buy the Russian flour, their gas, their oil, uranium, diamond, I mean, you name it, steel. It's a continent by itself. In the top of that, they have a military. Nobody should ever, you know, think to play with it. And yet we push hard and we try to go in war. That is terrorism too. That will create terrorism and chaos and, you know. Trump, he is against stopping sponsoring Saudi Arabia in the war of Yemen. Okay, why? Because the Al Houthi, they are terrorist group. Okay, I understand that. But as you see, when they want, they make it justified to sponsor a war which is killing thousands of civilians. And when they want, they say it's a crime. The Assad regime is a criminal. He killed thousands of civilians. But we support the Saudi who they are killing thousands and thousands of civilians. What we want, it's a crime in Syria. When we want, it is good to do in Yemen. And the same as the rest. The Emirates, the Bahrain, the Qatari, they sponsor whoever sponsor them. They sponsor people in, in Libya, in Yemen, etc. It's a war between parties. And this is all is terrorism, but only always people they notice one terrorist only who is holding a gun shooting people, right? But the fact there's big terrorists, nobody speak about them. Government who they are practicing terrorism. You know, we fund Turkey and the Turkish government, and we give them billions of dollars. And all of us, even you, you, there's a video of Joe Biden, uh, what his name, Joe Biden, me. Go watch it. This is Joe Biden, me, your beloved, uh, especially those liberals. He was saying how ISIS was funded. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Emirat, Bahrain. He said, our friends, our friends, our friends. They flood them with money, billions of dollars. It's not a secret. When ISIS is good for us to have, we let it go, let it grow. When ISIS became so big and we are done with it, we do not need it, okay, we put a needle in the ass of ISIS and we make it shrink. Right? Yeah, actually, I call him Joe Bite Me because each time he talk, he bite, he bite Obama, he expose him, you know? This guy, because he's a fool. You see, in the Middle East, we say, if you want to know their secret, speak to their fool. Like if you have an enemy, you want to know his secret, speak to his fool, not to the smart one. Either to their young or to their fool. So this guy, his name is Joe Bite Me, and he said it as it is. So terrorism should be rejected. Terrorism of states, terrorism of government, and terrorism of individuals, and terrorism of religion. But who want to listen? Nobody want to listen. And you know, we are not the one who is going on TV and able to speak. No, they are. I have a poor channel in YouTube. And just yesterday, I saw an article written by Indonesian newspaper about me. I am the most dangerous person in the world for Islam. Isn't this is a hate teaching? You know, you can see it this way because they are saying that this guy he is an enemy for Islam. And think about it now: how many maybe they are thinking to kill me? Right? I hope that this coming war will not happen in our time, where the whole earth will be demolished because of the stupidity of a human being and the hatred and the greed you see terrorism is a tool 
Muhammad he used terrorism as a tool to be victorious Muhammad he said and I will show you the hadith that he was victorious by terror from a distance of a month a distance of a month imagine Read carefully with me. The prophet said, I have been given five things which not given anyone else before me. Allah made me victorious by terror. They translate it here as Ewi. Of affrighting my enemies from a distance of one month journey. How peaceful Islam was in the time of Muhammad. To the point people are terrified from a distance of one month that's a lot of peace and obviously Muhammad was a very very peaceful man to the point you hear that he is a distance of a month away you will be terrified he's not even here yet a month away And this is what's happening in this world today. And now there is no distance of a month, month away. People, they have nukes. People, they have long-range missiles. They have dirty bombs. They have now, they have bombs, which, which just a bacteria bombs will kill certain kind of people. Imagine. Which means they have a bomb. Let us say they want to fight somebody, an army, uh, exist in a certain location certain ethnic group so what they do they have a certain bombs can kill only this ethnic group imagine how dirty the world become how evil nuke these days are just a toy it's not really the most powerful weapon like like Pakistan have nukes this is nothing this is a the Pakistani will not dare even to, to think about using them against someone like Russia or America because this is nothing what to what nuke nuke like a, a matches now so you can imagine what the future will bring to us I was made victorious by terror so now giant countries they are trying to be victorious by terror I scare you from a distance of a month like Muhammad they are learning from the first terrorist Muhammad Somebody saying to me, you are just a refugee. Russia would be hanged, so stop talking about. Yeah, a stupid guy making wisdom. First of all, my friend, I don't know if you who you are, but uh, speaking about refugee, all right, let us say for the sake of argument, I am refugee. So you are telling me, if I am refugee, I cannot open my mouth. That is a teaching of hate, and obviously you have a mental issue. Let us say somebody is a refugee. So you you are a human, he is not. And you can talk and say your opinion, and he cannot. First of all, I am not a refugee. Secondly, you are an idiot. In Russia, you would be hanged, so stop talking about. You are no better. I am sure if you have opportunity to hang me, you might do it too. And no, in Russia, you will not be hanged. Actually, if not Russia, all the Christians in Syria will be slaughtered today. It is the Russian really who stand against Al-Qaeda and ISIS in Syria. Almost ISIS took more than 80 to 85 percent of Syria. And the only territory left is where the Christian live in the mountains. If not Putin stood and he protect the Christian there, all the Christians in Syria will be history. The same as what happened when the Ottoman, they killed millions of Christians in Armenia and in Syria before. 
where nobody stood for them except the Russian. Actually, I have to say it clearly that the best, the best to the Christians in the Middle East, it was always the Russian. While the American government, CIA, Armin, Al Qaeda, and ISIS, even now, the Russian was defending the Christians in the Middle East. The war in Shishenia happened long time ago because of killing Christians in the Middle East and in Armenia. I never hated Russia and I will never hate the Russian. Why I want to hate them? And this is what we are talking about here. Hate is the problem. In America, they, they, they made you, since you are a child, to believe that the Russian are communists and you should hate them. In Russia now, there's more billionaires than what you have in your hometown. Actually, you as an American, you are a poor guy compared to the Russian. Go and see what the Russian they own. When the last time you have a vacation, go and see what the Russian, they are all over the world having vacation now. A price of an apartment in Moscow is eight hundred thousand dollar, a million dollar, and yet in Fox News and CNN still they say to you they are communist, and yet in Fox News still they say to you that Putin was a KGB. Why? Because they want to put in your head that we are fighting the KGB. You know what I mean? They want to just fool you. They want you to to hate Russia. You see, always, always, uh, uh, they needed an enemy. And Russia is a good enemy to control the mind of those poor American. I met with the Russian people. They are wonderful, nice people. Actually, they are very beautiful people. Why we can't be friends? The same, why we can't be friends with the Muslims? Why we can't be friends with the Jew? Why we can't be friends with the Hindu? This is the, this is the problem. You see, you are talking about we should hate a two uh, two hundred million Russian, and you 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 are bragging about it. Why? The hate against any country is going to serve who? What is what is the benefit for mankind we will we will have from accomplishing such a hate? Nuclear weapon, war. What what do you want? Somebody saying that Russian they hate niggers, as he said. I don't. First of all, don't use that word. That's stupid of you. Secondly, uh, I am not a Russian, and if they are racist, should not like me. I am a Middle Eastern. I spoke to them. They spoke to me in a very, very nice way. I never saw anyone insulting me for being a Middle Eastern. And I saw actually even Russian, they have a black boyfriend. So what are you talking about? And there is racist everywhere. I mean, in your country, you don't have racist. And look at you, you are, you are, you are, you are the one who is a racist. So why you are saying nigger, the word nigger, if you are not racist? You are talking against them that they are racist, but in fact, you are, you are the racist one. Unless your English is not first language, so you do not know what that word means. Isn't it, guys, that word is a racist word? Isn't it a racist word to say? Just say the N word? Okay. Well, you know, for me, it's, you know, for me, actually, I, I, I don't know what even that word, uh, uh, but I learned that this is a very racist statement to say. I know you can say the word black, right? Uh, but I think that word this guy he said is a racist word. So look at him. He is trying to say that the Russian, they are ugly people because they, they hate those people who he, he used the N word. And then he, you are the one who use it. <laughs> Do you see the hypocrisy? He's accusing the Russian that they are the one who hate the black people, but he is the one who is using the N-word. And be sure, please, you ban this guy, the, the admin. Go back to his name and ban him if he's not banned.
always judge a person by his fruit we cannot judge any nation you do not know even the you never been in Russia I am sure you never even spoke to a Russian yet but you are teaching people to hate Russian what about we start hating the German and the French and the, the Japanese and the Chinese and the Korean I mean here we go that's exactly what the world need filthy mentality where everybody hate everybody we hate hate the white hate the black hate hate the Asian I mean what is left Satan this is satanic Black people, they are wonderful people. What what their color have to do with them? You are exactly teaching as Muhammad. He said, Muhammad, he says that Allah, he created the black from the left shoulder of Adam. And he said, go to hell. This is what you believe. Fight hatred, my friend, because hatred always will destroy you. Imagine if you make every American hate every Russian and every Russian hate every American. What will happen next? Both countries they have enough weapon to burn the whole earth maybe 50 times. The whole earth not only is going to be USA and, and America. Stupid. The culture of hate bring nothing but stupidity. And actually, to be honest with you, I can trust Putin making a promise, but I cannot trust Trump or Obama making promise. Here we go. Look what happened. They they went to Syria. They armed the Kurdish. The Kurdish they finish uh, fighting ISIS, and then second day Trump he says bye bye. I'm leaving. So now Erdogan can come and eat you. So we leave them to the to the Turkish so they can eat them. The Russian they will not do that. American they do business fresh and Russian they have a friends For American you are just a business nothing personal Right Yeah, we have no friends we have only clients What a shame so don't go by the media who try to fool you like you know I remember Fox News every day was asking Obama when he is going to stand up for Russia and since Trump he took over Fox News never ask Trump to stand up for Russia no more look like suddenly Russia became a friend <laughs> what happened eight years Obama in the office every day you mentioned that when we will have a real president who can stand against the Russian so you want somebody to stand against the Russian when Obama was in office, but you don't want Trump to stand against the Russian? It's a propaganda. The same as CNN. CNN, when Obama was in office, never spoke about the Russian. Since Trump became in the office, the Russian, the Russian, the Russian, the Russian. This is the problem we have in this earth. You don't want to, re you know, you, you've been trained, you've been trained in your mind to reject people just because they have different name, different language, different color. Oh, this guy is black, or this guy is Asian, or this guy is white. And actually, I notice even racism as part of culture in a stupid way sometimes. And I will give you an example. Once I wanted to rent, uh, uh, like a, a, you know, apartment, and this was in the Philippines. Uh, you know, I don't have in my profile. It have a picture, but not really. It doesn't show me. It shows like uh, I forgot what is there. So I, I I requested to rent an apartment, and the guy he rejected my rent. I mean, why you want to reject me? Then a Filipino guy, he said to me, maybe he think you're a Filipino. Put your picture. So what do you mean? He said, Filipinos don't like to rent Filipinos. So are you serious? He said, yeah, but put your picture. I put my picture. The guy, he sent me a message apologizing for rejecting my rent. Imagine their own race. People, they are discriminating their own race.
Uh, no, uh, uh, Sammy Tunisi. Sorry, my friend. We don't appreciate anyone says I hate Muslims. That's wrong. Aren't you yourself? You used to be a Muslim yourself. How you say I hate Muslims? So you hate yourself? Do you hate your mother? Do you hate your parents? Aren't they still Muslims? You are an ex-Muslim. I understand your English is not your first language. But don't speak foolish. So imagine you have certain certain kind of uh, uh, racism culture to the point you hate your own race. You discriminate your own people. So this guy, he want to favor someone he is white over somebody he is from his own country. He's a Filipino. Self-discrimination. Which means in his in, in his mindset that a Filipino person for him is not good. But you are a Filipino, how you can do that? So always you have to be careful, you know, and fight hate from the roots. Don't say I want to hate the Russian because they are Russian. That's stupid. What about we live in this earth in peace and harmony? I mean, for the benefit of who, if we hate each other, what you want to have the you want to have the same as you want to have Hitler time coming back? You want to have fascism? This is what fascism is about. Imagine if all the Muslims in the world. All the Christians, all the Jews, all atheists, all colors, all ethnic, they live in harmony and in peace, and nobody hate anyone. How beautiful life will be, and how much money we save. Right now, we spend a huge budget, which may be more than what we spend for food and schools and roads and manufacturers all together in war weapon. Look how much we human being is obsessed with war. And security why because there's no love if the whole world practice one sentence of Christ where it says love your enemy the whole world will change you see heaven heaven can be living in this earth not in heaven which means we can have it right now if all of us we agree to practice one sentence love your enemy but if we want to follow Muhammad then the story will be different The culture of hate, the culture of slavery, the culture of the culture of the best man. Who is the best man? Look at this. The best man is you. Who is the one who do jihad and bring the filthy kuffar and the chain around their necks? We should fight this culture. And this is for benefit of everybody. Christians, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, because at the end of the day, there's no victorious. Who's going to have a victory? What, burning the whole earth? What victory is that? So let us say now, okay, you want to have a war. And war with who? Which is a good question, right? You will find yourself at the end of the day, you are fighting yourself. And then you destroy the whole earth, and then you will you will you will be, I mean you, not only I mean you, not only you, will, you nobody will be exist. You see, the coming war is not going to be a war. It's going to be an oven. All mankind they are going to demolish because who is going to guarantee to you that they are going to use just normal airplanes and tanks? When they are holding extremely, ex extremely dangerous, powerful weapons, who is going to put the limit where they will stop? When they are going to stop? Nobody knows. A little idiot, the head of North Korea, he scared the whole world. And what? He don't have anything compared to the Russian or other countries or to China. Just little tiny one. 
scaring everybody made the president of USA come to meet with him this is how scary he is but yes he have nothing this guy he can kill easy 30 40 million in two seconds That is the truth. So we, you know, uh, 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 I hope that people, they will learn something very important, that fighting hate is for the benefit of all, for the benefit of the Christians, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Jews, the atheists, doesn't matter who you are hatred will not help you in anything will not accomplish anything racism is ugly disgusting using certain words like this word I just said this is the first time by the way I say it because I was reading it in the text the n-word uh, you know when you say such a word you are you're just being silly and by the way according to science the white is black and the black is white I don't know how to explain that to you, but let us make it simple. When you look white, simply because your skin reflect a light, which is you don't have. Which means in reality, the white person is a black person. <laughs> Isn't it weird? <laughs> yeah. And you know my experience with the black people it's really good experience and maybe some people they have you know this is what happened mostly people they judge a country like the whole country by an experience good or bad let, let us say I go to Philippines and I say something wrong there so I say start saying oh Philippines are bad Philippines are wonderful people but if you have a bad experience with somebody there's a scammers everywhere there's thieves everywhere there's robberies everywhere I mean, all this is exist everywhere. Don't judge the majority by something happened to you, which is not good. All right, my friend. No, I don't love all people from all color. I believe all people because I don't believe in colors. I don't agree with you that I love people from all colors. I love all people because there's nothing is called colors. If you get injured, all of us we have red blood. That is our color, my friend. We are human. There's nothing is called black. There's nothing is called white. I understand. Sometimes you need to describe a person. No problem. You know. I mean, you, you, if you say Christian Prince looked like a Middle Eastern, well, he looked like a Middle Eastern. What I can do about it? I mean, this is not this is not discrimination. But it's discrimination to speak about color for no reason. There's no need to say this guy is black and this guy is white. Actually, when I was in, in the Middle East as a, as, a, as a person learning English, I find it very funny. I mean, I, first time I opened the book uh, English, it says Mr. Brown and then Mr. White. And then in the, in the book, you know, it's like for kids. There's a picture of Mr. Brown, but he don't look brown. He is a white person and then mr. white he's a black guy and I was saying to myself what's wrong with those uh, English people why they are calling this guy mr. Brown and he is white and they are calling mr. white and he's black in the picture I was a little bit confused you know I mean mr. Brown mr. white so for me I don't even like to have such a name I mean why, why are you are calling a person mr. Brown don't can't you give him different name? Give him uh, Mr. Zucchini, or oh, Mr. Chocolate, Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Zaraf. The, the white guy, he give him they give him a name like normal name, you know, uh, Mr. TV, uh, Mr. Potato. I mean, you can you cannot find a name better than uh, colors. So stay away from colors, because as if if colors will divide us, then we should stay away from mentioning them. Let us find what is going to make people united and more close together forget about your skin color that will not help you 
a person who is a black person who is a good for me he is good for me and better than somebody from my color so why I want to mention the color why the color is important and I mentioned to you many stories about things I you know it happened to me in my life from from people who they are African wonderful beautiful people look I have a person who is I, I, I hate to say now black and white but just to give you for the for the sake of example I have a person who is a white he drove for with me three days three days he brought his truck he moved me from far away state to other state for free he don't know me except I am a Christian Prince I have a black person and again I say the word I hate to say the word white and black but for the sake of example he was a wonderful person for me he helped me in many way in many means and all what he knew about me I'm just a Christian prince he is not from my family he is not from this both of them the white guy and the black guy I do not know them they are not relatives we are not from the same culture we are not from I mean we, we have nothing really except that we are believers look how beautiful Christ is may the Middle Eastern a white blonde man and a black man helping each other and all is for free which means there's no return nobody's asking for return this is what is the beauty of Christ is RT propaganda machine gun all of you you have a okay you see here we go I mean like we are talking about many things why you can have thousands of TV station who have a propaganda but they cannot have a propaganda they are fighting you back with their own propaganda I mean people don't I don't know people why people want to go blind when they want so you can have a propaganda isn't Fox News propaganda isn't CNN propaganda Go and watch the news in the CNN. The Syrian rebels, none of them is rebels. They are Muslim terrorists. Specifically, they are terrorists who say Allahu Akbar when they slaughter a human being. But they call them rebels. This is propaganda. So the Russian, they cannot have a TV propaganda, but you can. I mean, it's halal for us. It's haram for them. Everybody have a propaganda machine. <laughs> you know everybody have a propaganda machine why you can you cannot you have you have the control of Facebook you have the control of Google I mean you have the most powerful propaganda machine and you are complain about a little TV they have a TV look what you have Google is yours the internet is owned by America all the internet Facebook is yours Twitter is yours Instagram is yours and then you complain about RT propaganda propaganda poor Russian everybody have his own propaganda and you know actually propaganda is used for war and peace you know when when uh, when you say they want to go in war in Iraq what they do the propaganda started you know Saddam Hussein he have nuke Saddam Hussein became dangerous but just a few years ago Saddam Hussein was our friend the same as Taliban go right now and search how senators taking pictures with Taliban with the Mujahideen with Osama bin Laden himself so when our propaganda worshipped Osama bin Laden and they call him a hero I saw with the article in I think in New York Times a hero Osama bin Laden is a hero yes propaganda when they want they made him a hero when they want they made him a, a criminal the same as Khashoggi this guy he is Al-Qaeda he have even pictures with Muhammad as Abdullah Azzam and Osama bin Laden and he is holding RBG in Afghanistan when they want they made him a hero everybody crying for him yeah because that will you know serve a propaganda a target hmm. 
right? So my friend, always try to see the world in a different way. Don't always see a person in front of you who have a propaganda. All of them, they lie. ART, they lie. Turkish TV, they lie. Uh, uh, Fox News, they lie. Uh, CNN, all of them. Actually, if you, if you filter the lies of their news, you will find that the news they have is not even, maybe 1% is true news. Not even the title is true in all of them. You know that you know that George Bush. Anyone remember the the attack on in the, in a in a town? It's called Bisland in Russia. Who remember it? More than a thousand little child, little girls and boys slaughtered by Muslim terrorists from Chechnya. Do you know what George Bush he did? Less than two months after that, he invited the leader of that attack to the White House, and he called him. A, you know a Shishinian rebel how disgusting how you do that they just killed a thousand child so imagine if the Russian they invited Osama bin Laden two months after the attack and they call him uh, a rebel see American don't see what's happening and they are expecting the Russian to be like now the Russian are supporting uh, Iran well you are supporting every enemy in the world who is against them anyone want to go against the Russian right away you support him it's a dirty game and nobody want to be honest always you've been told one side of the story if you want the Russian not to support your enemy, don't support their enemy. <clears throat> as simple as that. It doesn't work in one way. Uh, and you know, for me, <laughs> I am not defending the Russian, by the way. I'm just saying the truth. Why I want to defend the Russian? Am I Russian? Tomorrow they, they will spread rumors saying a Christian prince is Russian, obviously. Right? I am an American. I even joined the USA Army. I love this country. And this is why I joined the, the army to defend this country. But saying the truth, it's a it's a it's not a question, it's a must for somebody who is a Christian. Say it as it is. People will hate you for it, people will like you, you know, doesn't matter. Say it. Don't be hypocrite. Otherwise, you join the join the club of 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 uh, of hypocrisy. Like you know, we speak about the KGB, right? KGB, KGB, KGB. Is the CIA better? I mean, is it a is it a noble ethical organization? <laughs> you know, assassination. The KGB, they assassinate. Well, do you remember the story? Like uh, the the uh, the scientists who uh, supposedly the Russian they try to assassinate him, and how Europe went crazy because of that, and England and blah blah. You know, CIA they assassinate every time. You know, always we assassinate people. Always. And we don't we don't send the W seven agent no more. We have the drone. We go to Somalia, like Al Wakili, who is a, a, an American citizen, who was killed for he joined terrorist. We, we assassinate him. That's assassination. What about uh, Osama bin Laden? Did we assassinate him? The guy was in his house. So they cannot assassinate. We can assassinate. You know what I mean? People don't want to see reality. They do the exact same act which is they're accusing Russia to do. You know, I see the world is like this. I mean, especially politics. It's like a whore. Her skirt is not even one inch and she have no panty. And she's speaking about the other whore and she have a dirt in her pant. But the first one, she don't have even a panty.
people don't want to see what is the truth right do you believe that's about Osama? For sure, I believe about Osama. Why not? I mean, he's a real person. Yeah, he he served he served the agenda. And uh, always Os Osama bin Laden. He was you know uh, uh, Osama bin Laden was using the American by the way, and the American they were using him. It's like sex with benefit. They're quite friend with benefit. You know, they are in bed together. Both of them they are using each other. So yes, the same as the the, the Islamic countries in many countries now they are using America. When the Shia they wanted to get rid of Saddam, they came hundreds of Muslim scholars kissing the shoes of George Bush, convincing him that if you go to Iraq, we will join you, we will support you. So George Bush he thought is going to be like a you know like a, a picnic trip. Okay, we will go. Let us take uh, Iraq. They went there after the American army. They finished suddenly. All those Muslim cleric they want America to leave because they used them. And the foolish Western they did not get it. They use you, always they use you. Same as the war in El Bosnia, same as the war in Somalia, same as the war in Yemen. You know, when they are done with you, they will say to you, "Get, get lost." Any one of you heard of uh, something about uh, Lawrence the Arab? Who learned about? Who knows about Lawrence the Arab? Anyone heard of this name before? Or Lawrence the Arabian? Lawrence the Arabian is a real person. It's like uh, James Bond now. But this is real. When the British, they want to get rid of the Ottoman or destroy the Ottoman Empire, they send one guy, just one guy, not 10, not 20, not 30, one guy. One guy very well skilled, very well trained, to make bombs to give a training and he start training the Arab how they can fight and make a revolution against the Ottoman and he was extremely successful and then suddenly oops we have a new kingdom it's called the Arabian Kingdom by a king his name is Faisal oh sorry they brought first the uh, Sharif Hussein the Sharif, which means the Honorable Hussein, who claimed to be from the family of Muhammad, he was made king by the British people, British government. And then they gave his kids kingdoms. Iraq is a kingdom. Jordan is a kingdom. Syria is a kingdom. Suddenly they are laying eggs kingdoms. The whole point is to destroy the Ottoman Empire, and they were successful. One man. Just one man. This is what intelligence can do. Right? Now, maybe some of you might think that this is a fiction story. It's a true story. Osama bin Laden is a person the same. He, he is using America, and America was using him. They wanted somebody who fight the Russian without being in them involved. Because they cannot, they cannot risk having a war with the Soviet Union. So what we do? We arm the puppets, the, the small ones. And they will do a lot of damage, more than having a war. So they start arming the Mujahideen. They give them missiles to take down airplanes. In less than a month, I think, the, the, the Soviet Union at that time lost more than maybe 20, 22 airplanes. Why? Because the American, they give them missiles, NT. Uh, uh, helicopters, anti anti uh, uh, aircraft. So we support terrorists when we want, and this is the case for many. And we're talking about government. When you speak about politics, right away speak about sewage. Politics is the same as sewage. Outside it have a nice look, but inside is disgusting. It's nothing but a grave. All governments in the world they have two faces. Face of a shiny person giving you as you know signing a signature for something good for humanity, and there is inside other other side of the story where it's ugly, disgusting. The same as the king of Saudi Arabia. He pray to Allah, oh, Allah forgive me, and he you see his eyes cr crying now. Suddenly he's a believer. Then the guy he go to the embassy, they chop him pieces. <laughs> Thank you, my friend from Indonesia. 
love you too you know but dear print well uh, a guy he went to the embassy we make him shish kebab and until now they cannot even find his you know this is the other face of the of the of a state the outside of the state this is a state of a believers people who worship god we believe in justice you know we no way we will allow killing our innocent person blah 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 blah, blah. then you go to an embassy you don't get out right always there is two face of the story and al khajiqji he, he why he became so famous as a story because there is a propaganda machine wanted to use this against saudi arabia which is qatar otherwise nobody would talk about it do you think they are talking about it because this guy the guy khashoggi is important it is not important for anyone it's just an opportunity to fight saudi arabia by qatar qatar and saudi arabia they are enemies now and both of them they use anything against each other to for their propaganda qatar is a very powerful country when it's come to money if you don't believe me go and search right now The biggest hotels in Europe owned by Qatar stadium same as the Saudi you know your your what is your favorite team uh, uh, go and check who is the owner of the team you will you will not be surprised if the owner is an Arab either Qatar or Emirat or Saudi Arabia you think you have you have a you have a team but the fact your team is not playing for you playing for the the oil business the Arab Sheikh Qatar bribe, you know, bribe more than a billion dollar for the Viva to get the 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 uh, 220 222 uh, 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 World Cup. Imagine a billion dollar. That's how it is. And nobody speak about it, and nobody, but everybody knows. I mean, what is the qualification of Qatar to hold such an event? Is that population? Is that location? Is it because it's easy to get a visa there? No. So why you give them such a privilege? Money. As simple as that. Why they have the biggest uh, teams in the world? Small, tiny country is not even the size of my family. If my grandfather he invite his children for lunch, we will have more the population of Qatar. What Qatar? Qatar is not even a country. It's just born. You know what? What, what country? What, what year the the Qatar was established? Seventy something, something like that. I mean, it's 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 not even a country. It's a small, tiny. You know, nothing. There's no population there. And suddenly it became the center of everything. Why? Because of money, gas, and oil. Anyway, guys, I hope today we have a good time together. Did we have a good time? So let us make it simple. Let us please, all of us, join the fight against hatred, uh, terrorism. Uh, the root, the root always is the problem, you know. We should not allow hatred to control our heart. Uh, because that will not help you in any way, in any mean. Never hate the Muslims. Regardless what he, what somebody do, because at the end of the day you are hurting yourself. Hate the hate, hate the hate, you know. So let us fight the hate itself. And I, I like it's strange to say hate the hate, but yet we are fighting hate, right? But I cannot find the word to use it to say to you. I don't know what is equivalent of that. So we have to fight the hate, which can take over us because of things happen to us. Strat like. Uh, uh, tragedy uh, painful things and by the way hatred can can destroy your family even, even forget about Islam or you know I mean even inside the house if you don't forgive your brother your sister your even your mother sometime or your parents did something wrong to you I mean you will live you will suffer forever thinking about it you are in pain inside you just let it go let it go forgive this is why you know the Bible insists on forgiveness this is why if you read and pray as a christian the prayer of the lord the first thing you will see the lord he says 
you ask the father to forgive to us the same we forgive to others which mean to be qualified to be forgiven you have to be a forgiving person and that is justice you don't forgive why I shall forgive you you are a sinner too so they commit sin to you you don't forgive them and you ask for forgiveness where is justice in that so forgiveness is very healing method it heal you from inside not like in Islam you know hatred it heal you if you remember the Quran says chapter 9 verse number 14 chapter 10 verse number 57 but in chapter 9 14 is speaking about healing the chest of the believers by killing the enemies we don't want to believe in that in fact that will not heal you that will make you more in sorrow because the enemy will respond back and then they will kill your child and then what will happen you are not healed you are suffering more and more they are suffering and you are suffering that will bring nothing but suffering to mankind that will heal nothing that will not remove anger from their heart because tomorrow the kids of those who you kill their kids they will come to you and they will seek revenge and they will kill your kids and then where is the healing you are talking about that is a very evil logic killing people will not heal your chest loving people will heal it forgiving people will heal it so me as a christian i reject the culture of hate of islam the teaching of the quran and because i'm a christian i reject to hate a muslim because that will not heal my chest neither his chest that will not solve the problem that will make it more ugly so we have to be smart and fight the illness not the sick the sick is sick imagine you have a you have somebody in your family and now he have a flu so in order to kill the flu you kill you kill the guy no we want to kill the flu not the guy fight the sickness jesus he said i came to the sick not to the healthy And that's very logical the one who need your help is a sick they need your help not your killing so even if somebody let us say you know somebody have a somebody is racist somebody is racist somebody he hate me because i'm a middle eastern so what i would do i will kill him then his family they will hate me more now they will hate more middle eastern that will not solve the problem show him that i am not a bad person why you hate me what i did to you Try to, 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 to find out the roots of the problem. Why why you want to hate a person who's a black? Who said that the black people, okay, if you have a problem with somebody who was a black one day, doesn't mean that all black people are the same as that guy, the same as the white person. Why somebody is black, you want to hate the white people? Who said that all the white are, are, are bad or all the white are good? So we have to fight the root of hate, otherwise that will not, never stop and that will increase. And that will divide society and imagine society is divided within their own where people they just point finger at each other you are, you are white you're black or Chinese you're a Christian you are a Muslim and we hate each other what a hell of life why they hate Israel so much because of the culture of the teaching of Islam Islam teach to hate the Jews and we showed you that already and that's why we want to show the Muslims that that will not help them. Why you don't live in peace with the Jews? That's it, you know. But that will not work as long as somebody want to believe in this religion and decide to follow it. And by the way, there's Muslims, they don't hate the Jews. There's Muslims, they don't have a problem to live even in Israel and they like Israel. Actually, I met an, a, a Muslim guy and I said, I, I thought he was going to attack Israel. But I was I was uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, surprised when he said he said to me, "Look, if we have if I live right now, if you ask me, where do you like to live? Under Palestinian government or Israeli government? I will say to you, Israeli. He said, in Israel, I have equal rights. 
I have equal salary. My salary as an Arab, he's a teacher, is not less than a teacher who is an Israeli, who is a Jew. I have the right to vote. I have the right to have a job. I have health insurance the same as he do. I have everything. I can be a member in the parliament. In the Palestinian territory, they discriminate you. In order to be somebody who have a doctor, you have to be rich. And able to be a leader, you have to be from a big family, powerful family, or somebody sponsor you with money. We don't have a parliament. We don't have democracy. We don't have justice. Somebody he wrote a paper or, or, you know, about you that you are you like Israel. They will drag you from your feet in the street and they will kill you with no mercy, savage way. He said, whatever they say about Israel, go and see that those who they are prisoner in Israel, they have a TV, they have nice food, they have even Hamas. They have health insurance inside the jail. <laughs> So this guy is a Muslim. He's saying to me, uh, uh, you know, I like to be an Israeli citizen. I don't like to be an Arab citizen. He's just being honest. In Israel, you live like a human. And, you know, for me, honestly, I wish I can go to Israel. I wish. Actually, I thought about it. For, but first, I cannot really afford it. It's expensive. Unless one of you want to pay for it. Secondly, if I go there, maybe they will not let me go because at the end of the day, I'm an Arab. But I love to go to Israel. It's actually, it's a wish for me to go there. Maybe one day. But maybe I, I better apply for a visa before I go because they might, you know, kick me out in the border. And I will not blame them if they kick me out. You know, I have my American passport, but still at the end of the day, I mean, I am an Arab. I like to go. Right, and actually, I will I will work for for such a visit to Israel. It will be will be a nice nice to do and see to understand, you know, uh, uh, to be in touch with with the with all where all the things happened, right? So I wish one day I can I can do it. Yeah. Uh. Why you don't refute Mukhtar Bashama's video against you about Arabic grammar? Who is this guy? And why he don't call me? And why I need to refute him? Why about he call me to refute me? Debating yourself, making a little video, and like 50 people watch it. What about you? Call me and see, show everybody. Huh? <laughs> I want to go in to refute him. I will go to the bathroom. I will close the door of the bathroom and I will do all the fart I have. But let him fart. If he is a man and he has something to say, call me. We are live. And my Skype is open right now. Let them cry like babies. Is that correct, guys? We are Christian friends. Why are you Christian friends? Don't uh, who's this guy? The big guys, we don't even count them. I am here. Give me give me his Skype. I will call him. If he is a big guy, he will not call me. I will call him. I will be humble. Is that good? <laughs> I will refute you about the grammar, brother. Yeah. And you know, I find it very funny when I, when I, when I, Abdul he says he 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 want to refute me in something. So let us say let us say for the sake of argument, somebody he refuted me in one or two or three things. So are you saying the ninety nine 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 things he said is true? How horrible! <laughs> huh? Yeah. We are. Have you ever seen? Have, honestly, just be honest with yourself. Have you ever seen somebody have the courage to take a life call? That's a big responsibility and big challenge, because I don't know what the question would be. Correct. All those who claim, either fighting Christians or fighting Islam, without mentioning names, they don't have their Skype open. 
for a very simple reason this is not easy to do you don't know even what he'll say to you you have to be a person with vast knowledge in the topic so you don't care what the person he will call and he will say and because all of them they are potatoes copy paste they search in Google and this is what they can talk about and they have a specific topic to talk about and this is why a Muslim when I debate me he have to prepare for the debate for maybe a century let us uh, choose a topic and always the topic is going to be the Trinity the Trinity that's it the Muslim he always seek refuge inside the Trinity because he cannot he don't he's afraid I'm going to ask him a question so he want to debate only about the Trinity why those who claim to be uh, big potatoes in Islam don't open their Skype and anyone call us and I will be the first one to call do it they don't dare right Shabir Ali he accepted to debate me and the one who contacted him you know he see he lie he said you, you know one in his interview he said the Christian Prince he contacted me I never contacted this idiot who are you to contact you it was ABN they sent me an email and send him an email ABN they said to me there's a guy we want you to debate him at that time I do not know even who's he I said whoever he is I don't care just let me know then I receive an email which is the forward from Shabir Ali uh, uh, to me and he said that he accepted to debate me and then I noticed the name is Shabir Ali I don't care and then uh, you know at that time I was doing the, the like the, the, sh the shipping for my books by myself in Amazon so I saw an order from Shabir Ali buying my book and I made a video about it Shabir Ali after he bought my book five or less than four days after I think he sent an email to ABN saying he apologized from doing a debate with the Christian Prince because he is busy with his PhD Which is absolutely a big false excuse. Because before he finished his PhD, he debated David Woodmore maybe more than four or five times. He's just trying to escape. And he wrote my book and he got my book and he never have. Why Shabir Ali don't go in, in his program and say, hey, Christian Prince book is full of garbage. Let me show you. Why you don't do that? There's one of you, he asked him a question, you know, I don't know if you remember the video. One of you, he asked him, uh, I have a $1 million question for you. When you are going to debate Christian Prince, he starts saying high leak, low leak, you know, trying just to, you know, uh, Shabir Ali is being Shabir Ali, being the, the, the guy who never answered a question. He said, maybe one day. But I guarantee you that this day would never happen. Right? Muslims when they debate they debate only a person they think they can make it with him It doesn't matter who is he Which means let us say it is possible I can make uh, I make myself look good in front of the audience. It's possible If that is not possible why he want to do it Right. I don't want to say he's a coward. That doesn't matter. He's a smart. Actually, he's smart. He has been smart because if he debate me, everybody will be laughing at him. Imagine Shabir Ali is calling me right now. I mean, how horrible the outcome of that will be. All of us we knew what will happen. The same reason Mimi Hijab, he ran away. The same reason Samsi, what is his name, Shamsi, Shamshi. The same reason uh, uh, the nurse Ali Dawa. All of them, they are kids. Who is the one who's calling me? Is the one who you know? Who do not know what he's talking about? Those who they are smart, they will not call because they knew what the outcome.
Where are they? Give me your give me your Skype. I will call you. All those names. Give me your Skype. I will call you voluntarily. Don't call me. I will call you. Still, they will not do it. Anyway, my friend, we are we are we are uh, happy that the Lord He provides us with knowledge, and uh, I am happy myself that I was able to help a lot of Christians to learn how to refute this cult, uh, and I think this is very very you know uh, let's say we are lucky. CP is true that the Quran gives Muslims the right to why people. Who sin and whip? What you mean, whip people in the in public? Yes, uh, but is you see the the teaching of the of Islam is not only in the Quran. Uh, maybe maybe in the future videos we can talk about uh, how Muhammad started. What it's called Matawa. Matawa right now. If you go to Saudi Arabia, let me search some pictures. In Saudi Arabia, they have something Matawa. Matawiya, which means the one who make you uh, uh, obedience or Matawa. So if you are not obeying the Sharia law, they will beat you up in the street. And that is started from the time of Muhammad. This is not something new. I'm trying to find you some videos, but maybe but better is not uh, uh, play a video because they will play a copyright over it. Yeah, there's tons of uh, videos. Anyway, you can search about them. It's called the religious police. To make it simple, the religious police. The religious police, if you don't close your store in the time of the prayer, they can beat you up. Uh, because the Quran says, They order to do the right thing. And they forbid what is munkar, which means rejected. See most uh, most uh, most of the verses where they use for the police, the Saudi police, is those verses. Chapter three, verse one hundred four. Uh, chapter three, verse one ten. Chapter three, one fourteen. Chapter seven, verse one fifty seven. So, like this is the major, you know, the the major teaching. Where the religious police has started from. All right? Which is saying that the believers they should enforce the goodness and forbid what is not good. And who is the one who decided who is not good? Muhammad. All right? Like if you remember, we always mention chapter three, verse number ten, right? You are the best of the community who has been raised up to mankind. Why? If you go in the hadith, the hadith explain that. The hadith says that the Muslims are the best of the community. See, this is the verse, same chapter, chapter 3, verse 110. It says, you are the best of people ever raised for up for the benefit of mankind. And here, chapter 3, 110, the best of for mankind are those who bring them with the chains around their necks till they embrace Islam. So, using violence, is a way to force people to embrace Islam and to practice Islam. Do you see it? And Muhammad, he said it clearly that if you, you know, like if you, uh, if you see somebody doing something not right, 
you know, uh, fix it with your hand, which means use violence. But if you could not, you are weak, he's stronger than you, just do it by your mouth. Even if that, if you cannot do it by your mouth, then shut up. <laughs> you know? Uh, hypocrisy. Right? I hope I did answer you, my friend. Any Abdul before we go? See, I open my Skype, not even one Abdul. He have the courage really to call us. See it? This is where the roots of the religious police come from. All right, I better go because look like we have a storm coming. Big one. And I hope we will not lose electricity. I hope so. Uh, again, I, I'm not going to keep this video really. There's nothing much. There's no debate. I keep them only if there's an important debate. Uh, and if there's nothing really, I'm not going to keep them. Uh, I like to keep my page only the debates and those who they are not really too much important for me You guys can download them and have them around. So please always download my videos as soon as I finish and uh, uh, You know Take my advice and this is an advice from a person who have no benefit of giving you advice except you know What is good for all of us? Don't adopt hatred in your heart even according even with your friends not only with Muslims, not only with the uh, atheists, not only, I mean, whoever you are. Hatred will not help you. If you live in a house, imagine you have one person in the house. He have hatred for people around. How ugly the house will be. You will lose a trust. You will lose security. You will lose safety. You will not, you, your life will be destroyed. Imagine you have a wife and you hate her or she hate you. What kind of marriage this marriage is? If, imagine you have a son, but he hate you, your son. That's possible. That means there is a failure in the house, big failure. Hate present a failure, not a succeed. And Islam teaching hate present that Islam is a failure, which is in purpose happen because it's from the devil. The devil always behind all hatred. He is the father of all lies. Where he says to you, oh, a black person is bad. So we have to hate him. That is because he's lying to you, making you put your anger in someone else so he will hate you back and that will destroy the society. What is going to be better? If we black and white live together in peace and love each other or we hate each other? I mean, the answer I think is very simple, right? Same as with Muslims. What is better if we Christians, Jews, Hindus, Muslims, atheists, we, li we know we live in one society and if one of us he in the street he need help all of those people will help isn't it beautiful I told you last time when I was in Germany I saw an old woman twice actually one in the bus and once in the bus station it's like a long distance struggle I saw an old woman I don't know her she's a Muslim she's dressing as a Muslim I gave her my seat it was raining and there's no umbrella it's like there's a small spot you can sit underneath of it and I have I have a seat, you know, and she came. She's an old woman. I gave her my seat, even though I am tired, long distance. I am coming from USA. I mean, long distance, long trip. I need to sleep. I did not sleep in the. So I gave her my seat. He, she's a Muslim. Why not? Why not, my friend? And if you are a Muslim and you see. A woman she is old doesn't matter who she she is a Jew she is a Hindu she is a Christian be a human stop adopting the culture of hate because this is could be your mother it could be my mother so look at her as a mother of somebody and she's an old woman and one day you yourself you will be old and this is something actually we miss in our society that you know like when you see somebody is an old, help him. Don't just, you know you are young, you can stand up. You can stand in your feet for two hours, three hours. Don't be stupid, don't be an idiot. 
you have a gum in your mouth and like mm, mm, and there's nothing happen you see a woman she's a pregnant give her give her your chair shame on you to be there and you don't do something good be a man you know what man we need to learn again how to be a real man in the old days I mean you watch the old days movies and you see how a person he speak to a woman with respect yes ma'am how a man he stand up and he give his chair to a woman especially if she is old or she is you know I guarantee you they will stand up for a woman she have a short skirt but if she's old nobody want to stand up for her my friend what do you do to others will be done to you one day you will be old and nobody will stand for you if you don't take care of your parents as an example your child is watching one day you will become in an age where you cannot serve yourself and then your child will say to you you say to your child oh you want to put me in nursing home after all what I did to you he will say to you what he says isn't this what you did to your parents isn't this what you did to your parents so now it's bad how come you didn't think about it bad when you did that to your parents so you know our society we need like a kind of a revolution to go back you know like they say in old days are bad actually old days people are a lot better than now today children are rude a, a person he said the f4 to his father so what what kind of family we have why because the family the mother and the father they aren't qualified to be parents no more they are speaking filthy language in the front of the kids even some of them they are taking drugs in the front of the kids this is why I say not everyone is a qualified to be a parent if you cannot be qualified to be a parent don't get married and don't have kids What do you do to others will be done to you. Learn that. Always life will bounce back. You do good, good will come. I go everywhere and I find people who want to help me left and right. I do not know them. And I think the Lord always, he pay me back. I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless you all. And until we see you again soon, please don't forget to subscribe, share our videos, tell your friends. And if you like to learn more about Islam, feel free to read my books. We have them in many languages. And please, if there is any of you who speak of French, tell your friends about my French book. Until now, this book is the lowest to be known between all my other books because no French around me to tell people about this book even though the translation of it is fantastic so if you are a person who speak of french please tell everybody you know from those who speak french about this book and you can find it in amazon thank you very much for being here may the lord bless you and i will see you soon again christ is lord islam is false and see you soon bye bye